Hi, Larry Gaines, PowerCycleTrading.com. Well, in this video, I want to go over the bond market here. So TLT, the kind of the 10-year, 20-year Treasury note uh, uh, ETF. Uh, and so, you know, the, the markets right now, a lot of the main markets are, you know, the NASDAQ 100, the S&P, they're getting pretty stretched and, and extended. So kind of looking towards the bonds here to kind of tell us the story. So, you know, we, we had this big uh, bond sell-off earlier in the year. So, you know, bonds going down means rates going higher. So, you know, the fear of inflation. So, so the expectation that the, the maybe the Fed, Fed will put the brakes on. So we had the bonds, you can see here, the last few days ago, it, it hit a top here of the 200-day moving average. I'll pull that up. And then we also see that the momentum, here's the four-hour time frame. You see momentum started shifting down. The daily time frame started losing a little bit of momentum. Uh, and then let's take a look just at the regular chart, and I'll show you what I, I'm kind of looking for currently, and then the potential trade setup uh, to take advantage of if the bond markets do start to stall out or top out. So let me show you this next chart. So again, here's the chart of the TLT, the 20-year Treasury ETF. And so you can see from this prior swing high right up here, this uh, that was back in August of 2020, then you can see the bond market starts selling off. We had the big sell-off, you know, everybody's uh, fearing inflation, et cetera, et cetera. Now, then we, the, the, the trade got overcrowded and had a big bounce and we had a big short covering rally. And so we came into the Fibonacci level right here. You can see from the swing high to this swing low here in uh, March. Currently, we've got a Fib level coming and right here at about 148. And this is a 200-day moving average, that blue line coming in right there as well. So really solid resistance. Now you can see that it hit through here on the 8th of June, uh, July right here last week, popped over and then had a big failure and a move down uh, the last three days. But then today we had, you know, Powell speaking. And again, he's, you know, saying inflation's transitory, et cetera. Uh, you know, even though that, uh, you know, we had a PPI number rose 7.3% year on year, they were estimated 6.8 and then we had a big pop on the CPI as well. So inflation is here and you know once you get you know uh, labor cost, uh, you, r wages, etc. It's hard to pull those back down. So I, I still think that this is a key area to watch over the next few days and if we get a move here and it fails again at that 200 day moving average in this 382 retracement level, if you start seeing it roll over and can't sustain an upside move, then I think it's a great place to set up a short and one of the best ways to do a short trade on this for a longer term potential move down so you could adjust the trade if you need is using a what we call a counter diagonal uh, option spread. So I'll show you the trade idea that I'm thinking of. But first, I want to see if it does hit through this 200 day and fails again. And that will kind of be the trigger point uh, for this trade. So let me show you the setup. So what I look to do is if we get up to this 200, we start to fail. So wherever it's trading, I'll, I'll look to go out. I was looking to probably go out maybe to the August 27th series right here. So I'd go out to the series right here. Here. Let me get rid of this to this 27 August series, 44 days out. And buy at, the, so if it's trading, let's say right today, it's trading at 146. So I'd probably, if this, if I was setting it up today, I would buy the, probably the 146 put right here, going for, you know, 250, 264, something like that. And then what I'd want to do is sell against it a shorter dated option, probably right now, that would be this 23 July series right here. And I'd probably sell either the 44 or maybe the 43 and a half, because I want to bring in some premium and give give this trade positive theta. So maybe I'd sell the 44. So we've got a $2 wide spread. The cost of the trade is your debit cost. That's the max risk 228. And so that would be the trade setup I'd probably look at. So this would be a debit cost trade and the calendar uh, or calendar diagonals or selling volatility in time as well, taking advantage of theta decay. So you can see here, if this trade was set up 27 August long, 146 short 23 July, next week, 144, $2 wide, cost of the trade, 228 bucks per spread. You can see the positive theta. It's got a dollar positive theta. So as the market, if it just churns, what we can do is take advantage of that theta decay. We could always, uh, if it stays up here into the next week's expiration and it doesn't close at 144, we'll keep the short premium that we've received from selling that 44, 144, which would be today would be up $28. That would adjust down the long dated 146. But if it does go into our target, say next week by the expiration date on the short date of the 23 July 144, if it was to go there, next week. I'll put it on that date range. So that'd be the 23rd of July. And let's say it gets up here right to that number 143. This will be up about $140, $148 per spread. So, you know, either way, if it does uh, come down before you can uh, adjust the trade, you make money. And if it uh, uh, doesn't uh, come down to our target and, and it stays above that short strike of one, in this example, 144, uh, 
uh, we keep the premium that we received and we just roll it to the next week. So it's a really great strategy for you know trading a directional trade, but you, it gives yourself more time for the trade to work out. So that's the kind of trading idea setup that I'm looking at, and that'd be for bonds if we get a stalling right here on TLT up about, let's say 149 in that range at that 200 day moving average. So if you'd like to learn more about these types of trade setups, uh, make sure to check us out at powercycletrading.com. Good luck trading.